Hi, Mike Lambo here, and uh, I'm just preempting a question which I'm sure will come my way fairly regularly uh, in this video, um, which is to explain or outline at least the differences between the fields of Normandy, which uh, was my first game and has been out for over a year now at the time of recording this video, and Fields of Normandy 2, which uh, is going to be published very shortly after this video, and um, this is an extract from that new game here. So comparing Fields of Normandy, uh, the original The Fields of Normandy, with The Fields of Normandy 2. So let's run through them very quickly. Uh, there are quite a few significant differences, um, although it's based on the same system. I mean, it is a sequel, um, and therefore it does use the same system. So if you've played The Fields of Normandy, then you will at least be familiar with probably 70 or 80 percent of the rules for the fields of Normandy 2. It won't be like learning a whole new game. So first thing to notice, I guess, is that the graphics have improved, the graphic design. So even the latest version of the fields of Normandy, uh, that, which, which looks like that, um, you can see there's a, quite a difference in how it looks. Uh, the size of the missions is also different. There are 12 missions in the fields of Normandy 2. And whilst there were 15 in the first game, I'm sure you'll recall if you've played that one that some of them were pretty small and very quick playing. There's none of that in the Fields of Normandy 2. There are just 12 missions and they are all full size and they do take longer. So the turn tracker is longer. So Fields of Normandy, I think eight turns was the longest. And here we have 10 turns. And again, that's for every mission. So every mission is 10 turns long. And every mission also has 12 potential enemy positions so again that's more than there were in most of the missions in the fields of normandy uh, number one so this is a meatier game straight away the missions last longer uh, also each mission starts with a full set of u.s troops a full platoon if you like three rifle squads a mortar team a machine gun team uh, and a bazooka team this time it's because this is the u.s forces that we're dealing with here uh, operation cobra through normandy and Therefore, each mission starts with that full platoon as well. So again, there are no smaller missions where you're just controlling two or three units. So you will, will always have the full six. So let's run through some of the actual gameplay differences then, so as well as the graphic design. Um, so the differences are these. Then, uh, firstly, US units can now move in any direction, or allied units, should say, can now move in any direction. Um, whereas in the first game, you could only advance, so you could only push forward all the time, whereas now you can move your units back if you like. Not always the best idea, of course, because you are against the clock in some ways. You have 10 turns to complete the mission to clear the map of enemy forces. Uh, but sometimes it is necessary to pull back for some reason, or you might want to you know, come from, sort of get behind enemy units and attack their um, rear side, if you like. Um, the basic statistics for US units have changed to make them uh, a little bit harder to hit the German units than it was in the first game. Uh, so that's really to reflect the fact, you know, the reality of the situation that the German units were generally well dug in and so really should all have cover markers on them you know the cover markers can be earned by the US or found by you know cover can be found by the US units as they're pushing through but the German units kind of already had that cover so the uh, two hit numbers for US units are slightly weaker than they are for the German units which naturally makes the game a little more challenging um, all German forces now appear on the map uh, there are no German forces starting, so you may recall in the first game that, for example, half tracks and artillery unit, German artillery units tended to start the game on the map already um, in the Fields of Normandy 2. All of those units may or may not appear uh, in each of these enemy positions. So each time an enemy position is approached or scouted or found or scouted, then a role on the German units table here will show us that there is artillery on here. Um, and half tracks indeed so they may or may not appear makes the whole game a little bit more unpredictable in terms of the challenge it will face each time you play through and of course the positioning of those units such as half tracks and artillery do change the way the mission will play out quite considerably next is that the german unit chart now includes an all clear um, option which means that the hex found is indeed all clear and has no german unit in it so 
Um, that's obviously advantageous, but fairly rare, but you'll generally find one or two of those per mission, perhaps. There are a couple of new terrain features in the Fields of Normandy 2. Um, so there are now water hexes, and you can see an example of that here. There's a lake in the middle of this mission, which is in fact called the lake. But they do appear on other missions as well. Um, and, and rivers still, uh, rivers are still there, not on this map, but there are still rivers, just so that there were in the first book as well, with bridges and so on. Uh, and they're also in this um, version, Bocage, which is like common in Normandy, of course, um, a you know, key feature of the terrain out there. So these sort of thick hedgerows here, there's only two on this map, but some maps have quite a, a, a lot of Bocage. And that provides defensive bonuses shooting um, for, for both units shooting through that. So again, just mixes up uh, the game a little bit, um, makes you think about positioning and tactics a little bit more. Uh, next, machine gun units, uh, so MG, US MGs and bazooka teams can now move and fire, which they couldn't do in the first game, but they do. if they do that, they do suffer a penalty of plus one to hit their target. So that just helps the game flow a little bit more. I know sometimes there's a bit of frustration about not being able to move these units up quite as quickly as you wanted to. It still happens sometimes. You still Sometimes units do get a bit stuck for various reasons, but not as much, and that does allow you to move up and fire which is good. And machine guns can also fire twice. They have an option to fire twice in their, in their chart here. So if on a five, an MG team can fire and fire. It means they can't move, of course, but if they're already adjacent to an enemy and just want to you know, clear it or, or even fire at two different enemies, then they can fire twice on a five, which uh, is useful as well. US rifle squads can now call in artillery. Uh, you can also call in a, a US artillery strike, which will generally attack each reveals German units on the, currently on the board, and they can also assault here as well on a five, so they can attack an adjacent unit and enter their hex um, and get rid of them. Um, it's subject to return, you know, risk of return fire as they advance, but uh, as they assault. But nonetheless, it's an option which can be useful in certain situations. Grenade attacks can now destroy half tracks um, as well as. Um, the new artillery order. So artillery and grenades can destroy half tracks, so they're a little bit more um, destroyable, if that's a word, than they were in the first game. Each US unit can only have one cover marker now, so rather than sort of stacking all the cover markers on a unit, they can only find cover once. Once they've found cover, they can't do that, it can't do that particular order again. Um, and it'll keep that cover as it did in the first game until it moves out into a different hex, uh, and then it will lose its cover. Uh, and it will need to find new cover. Uh, so another unit cannot use the cover that's been found by a different unit. Uh, the facing of German units can change. So whilst German units still don't move, there's one exception to I'll come to in a moment, but generally this, the, you know, in reality, the German units are well dug in, they're defending. So, you know, why would they? They weren't really allowed to retreat. Um, and they were, as, as I say, well dug into defensive positions, um, but they will potentially change their um, facing. So they, they can sometimes, when, when attacked, if that attack misses, they will turn their facing one hex edge towards the attacking unit. So that can um, kind of a real impact, actually, sometimes when you're deciding whether to fire at a particular German unit or not. Uh, mortars, so US mortars can now fire defensive smoke, so they can pop smoke into any hex. So they could smoke their own troops for defence or, or smoke um, German troops to... Um, prevent them firing as effectively. So that can be quite a useful defensive mechanism as well. Something else to think about. Uh, German art artillery operates a little bit differently than it did before. I'm not gonna go into details on how that is, but it does work slightly differently to uh, how it was before. Um, perhaps a little bit more dangerous uh, than it used to be. Um, but of course, it may or may not appear in the mission. Scouted uh, German units can now be placed facing off the map, which they couldn't in the first game, but they must still be faced, play, uh, still be um, placed facing down the map at least, but they can be placed facing off the edge of the map, um, if you so wish. Um, then there, there are a couple of new units, new German units in, in the fields of Normandy 2, which didn't appear in the first book. Um, the first one then is a German Panzer IV, so again, it won't appear very often, but if it does, uh, then it will tend to appear on this T-hex here, and then it will actually move along the arrowed route. Now, for this map, it's just sort of following this road round and then disappearing. 
some maps it will cut across the middle or come down and then sometimes the route splits so you have to decide randomly when it gets to the split which way it will go so you don't always know where it's going to go and it will attack all us units around it and adjacent hexes around it um, generally deemed to be with machine gun fire so it's not overly powerful but still something you don't really want to get next to if you can help it they're not easy to destroy can only be destroyed um, really by a bazooka or by um, assaulting it I think from memory I'd have to just double check I think I think I made it so you could you can assault a tank so with a rifle squad can uh, you know go up to it and stick mines on the side or shove grenades down the hatch and all that kind of thing you know um, and finally, there's also German snipers, which uh, don't actually appear on the map. They, they are deemed to be part of a rifle squad. So sometimes when a rifle, German rifle squad appears, it, according to the chart here, there is um, a chance it will have a sniper with it. And if so, the sniper will take an instant shot at the um, unit that discovered that particular rifle unit. So we've got German um, tanks as well as snipers in there just to mix things up a little bit. So lots of variety. Every time you play a single mission it will play out very differently depending on what you know which German units appear and where they are. For example you know mines are still in here so for example on this map if you wanted to push down the right hand side here and you know one of these two positions here will turn out to be a minefield then that's going to make quite a different game to if they're not minefields because if it's a minefield you're probably then going to have to push everyone around here and of course if a tank comes that's going to be problematic whereas if that's not a minefield you might be going that way so you know the whole thing plays out very differently depending on what happens what units appear um, and so on um so they're the key things. There may be one or two other things I'm not for. Oh, there's a campaign that comes with the Fields of Normandy 2 as well. And that's what these victory points are on the turn tracker here. But you can read about that uh, if and when you buy the game. Okay, folks, thanks very much. Cheers.